Hey, it's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini, and in this video tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how to make these fun Santa hats with pom-poms on my 48-pin knitting machine. So by now, you've probably seen one of these knitting machines on some social media platform like TikTok or Instagram or right here on YouTube. They're quite popular at the moment. Now, the branding on them can be different and a lot of different companies will make similar ones. But if yours looks like this, same colors and all, and has a different brand here, mine says Jamit, uh, if it has 48 pins or needles here, you'll be able to follow along exactly with my tutorial. So I'll include a link to where I got mine. I know that at the time I'm filming this video, they're pretty much sold out everywhere, but give the link that I've included a try and see if you can get your hands on one if you don't have one already. All right, so first a quick overview of the Santa hats that we're gonna be making. You can see it's red on the outside, and then we have white in the inside so that when we fold up the brim, we get that nice contrast band all the way around the bottom. Then we also made a little yarn pom-pom using the same white yarn that's down here. So this one is a little bit longer, more of an adult size, or if you want it a little bit slouchier. And then this one I made for one of my kids. So I need to make two more. I'm gonna film the tutorial now, and we'll talk a little bit about the number of rounds as we get into the tutorial, all right? So these are the hats. It's two layers, super cute and quick to make. It takes me about between 15 and 20 minutes to make one. This is the knitting machine that we're going to be using. This is the one that I have, and you'll see it online over, under a ton of different names, meaning the branding that's put on it here. Some are Centro, Centro, this one says Jamit. I find that they all look exactly the same, and they're pretty much the same thing. It's just they're branded differently. So I'll include a link in the description box on where you can find one. This is the handle here to crank. It also has a little counter, so that's how we're going to keep track of our rows. All right, this is where we're gonna feed the yarn and then we have a little tension assembly here. On the side, there is a little switch for T and P and that just means whether you're going to be cranking tubular, okay, which was what we're gonna be doing in the round, all the way around uh, the pins on the machine. And then P is if you are going to be knitting a flat panel. So we want it to be on T to make these Santa hats. Now, aside from the machine, you'll also need something to cut your yarn with and some type of a crochet hook. In case we have any drop stitches, we'll be able to pick it up with the hook. The machine does come with a little plastic one, but I prefer to use my own metal ones. For yarn, I'm working with Brava. This is a worsted weight yarn that comes in all these solid colors. There's tons of colors available. The link for this is gonna be in the description box below for you. This is the exact same yarn I used here. It works really well in this machine, so I'm really happy with it. 100% acrylic, meaning it's easy to use, great for crafts, and also easy to care for because you can pop it in the wash. Now to start, I'm just gonna crank the handle away from me until I see one of these needles that pops up and it's a white needle. You can also look at the numbers. There's numbers in each slot here, and I can see that I'm coming around to it. So there is the white needle. So I like to start with that somewhere in this area. This is the last needle, so it's labeled number 48. There's different brands and different sizes, so there's another one that's 40, and then I also have a smaller one that I believe is like 20 something. So different sizes for different things, but this 48 pin one is great for this hat. So now we're gonna start off with about a 15 to 18 inch tail of the yarn and just drop it in the center of the machine. This is basically your cast on round. So you need to wind in front of one, behind the next, in front of the other, behind the next. And so you're gonna be doing that little by little by cranking with the handle here, forward always, all right? So this is uh, needle number 48. So I'm gonna start on needle number one. So if I go in front of it, like that, meaning under the front hook of it, then the next one I need to go behind. And then I crank a little bit more. So as this pin comes up, then I go under it and I crank a little more and go behind the next one, in front, behind. And of course, as you do this more and more times, you'll get quicker. But make sure that you go slow enough to make sure that you are doing in front of one and behind the other in front of one because if you mess up here, it's not going to work. It'll set you up for a mess and you'll have some loose stitches, drop stitches and all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to continue till I work my way around. All right, so now we've made our way back around and this is the last one. So now that goes behind that last one. That's just how it landed. So now we're gonna get ready to crank. So we're gonna slide the yarn into here. This is basically the part that feeds the yarn into the machine as you crank it. 
And then down here we have the little tension assembly and it has three spots. So the first one is really small, this one is a little bigger, and this one is the biggest. The smaller the opening here for your yarn, the more tension is being applied. And I have found just by playing around with it that if I put this number four worsted weight yarn in the big one, the fabric that's created is too loose. So I like it right in the middle one. All right, some people also will just tension it in their hand. Whatever you find that works for you is fine. Okay, so this stuff is in place here. Now we're gonna reset the counter. So now I'm just gonna go slowly and I find that these first couple of rounds are really gonna either set you up for success or have it be a hot mess. So I'm just cranking. If you feel it get too tight or anything, then you need to stop and figure out, you know, where's the yarn getting hung up on or what's going on. So I did one full round there and I didn't have any problems. I'm gonna go picking up the speed a little bit. Now one thing to note is that the ball of yarn, I don't keep it on the table. I actually just throw it to the floor and that way I can pull out a bunch of slack and have it be nice and loose as it approaches the machine. You do not want the cranking motion here to be what is pulling the yarn off the ball. That tension is gonna be way too tight and it's gonna be uneven in the finished project, okay? So now I haven't had any snags or any issues yet. So I'm gonna start picking up the pace. And then stop every couple cranks, you know, pull some more slack from the ball of yarn. Make sure it's not getting caught on anything. And you're just gonna keep cranking here, depending on the size that you're making. Um, I like to go ahead and crank about 65 to 70 rows of the red, all right? So I'm gonna keep cranking here and then I'll meet you back when we're there so I can show you how you would uh, switch off and introduce the white yarn in here because it all is one super long tube and it's all done together, all right? All right, so 65 rounds. Now we're done with the red, so we need to introduce the new yarn, the white one. So I'm going to just leave like six or eight inches. It doesn't have to be that much. I cut my red, and I'm gonna take it out of this guide here. And remember, it went in front of this last uh, needle. That, that white one is my number 48 needle. And then I'm gonna throw the tail to the inside. Then let's grab the white. And now instead of casting on like we did at the beginning, okay, with the red, you're just changing yarn color. So right here, I'm just gonna do the same thing with a tail of about six to 10 inches, something like that. Leave it in there. And then I'm going to slip it through the guide that feeds the yarn in, and I'm gonna reset it in that middle uh, tension opening there, tension hole on the little tension assembly thing. So, so now I drop this and notice where I'm starting it in between these two needles. Some people start a few needles before, kind of like to lock it in. I'm just gonna leave it right there and it works fine. All right, so like that. And then I'm gonna reset this. Okay, so we did 65 red. I'm gonna reset it now so that I can crank 70 in the white. And I always do about five to 10 extra rounds of the white more than the red. And I'll explain to you why when we get to the end so you can see. So just like that, you just introduce the white and you just keep cranking the same way you were doing with the red. So I'm just gonna keep going here until I have uh, 70 rounds done, okay? And then after we work our way in the white a few inches, I'll show you what I do with these two in the meantime. So just keep cranking. All right, so now I'm gonna stop and do something that I like to do to avoid drag. What I find works is that as I work along and this keeps getting longer and longer, I'm just gonna come in here and just roll that edge onto itself. You see that? So now there's no drag inside touching the table and we can continue and then just stop every five to 10 rounds or something and adjust as it continues to get longer. All right. So I've gone a few inches here on the white. So I'm gonna grab these two tails and I just do an overhand knot between the two. Don't cinch it in too tight because then that's going to affect the tension of how the stitches on the right side of this look. So I just cinch it up enough so that it looks kind of in line like the others. Like they're together but not a super tight knot, okay? 
And then just from there, sometimes I'll do another overhand knot just to lock it as a little knot in place. Okay, and then we'll weave in these ends at the end. Some people don't like to do a proper knot, they just do the overhand like that and then they weave it in here and here. But these are for my kids and I know they're gonna get thrown in the washing machine. So uh, I don't want that overhand, that one overhand knot to work its way out over time. I'd rather have a proper knot in place holding it. So up to you. Okay, let's keep cranking. All right, so now we have 70 rounds. I went right to the last one, so I stopped kind of in between the last needle and the first one. Let's take the yarn out, and you're gonna cut this yarn. Leave yourself about 18 inches, just to make sure you have enough. Okay, I'm going to slip this out of here and I'm going to hold it up lightly and crank one full round with no yarn being fed through. So I'm just holding it and I'm trying to do this one hand. You can even just put it there for now, but stop before you get to that beginning again because otherwise all the live stitches are going to start falling off. So I'm going to stop right there. Stop, 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 and grab your yarn needle or darning needle. All right, so that tail that we cut, let's feed it through our needle. Because now we need to pick up the live stitches as we cast off or bind off, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so this is the last stitch, and that's the one, the white one, that the yarn is coming out of. So now I need to go into the first one. And notice what I'm doing, I just like go in between these two little plastic prong pieces there that hold the stitch. And I like to use a tapestry needle that has a slight bend in the shaft here, because it allows me to get under there and then pull through. So I'm coming in from the inside of the machine, looping it on, pull the yarn through and up. The next one in the same motion from the inside of the machine towards out, and picking up that stitch. So let me give you a close up so you know exactly where to insert your needle. Okay, so the next one is here. You see that stitch? I'm coming from the inside out. Inside, scoop it up and out. And so as I start to go around this way, you can then, once you've picked up those live stitches, you can crank, but don't go too far because if you keep cranking, this one is gonna go down and that stitch is gonna fall out. So just like crank it enough to where you're like an inch away from where the yarn is coming out of, and then be careful, stop, and maybe scoop up the next five or six stitches. And you just repeat that all the way around to get every one of these stitches onto your yarn tail. And there's one and this one and then the last one keep cranking until it comes up and there you are number 48 anyways so let me unroll this whole thing and show you what it looks like I'll take this off so it's not clanking around okay so you have one really long tube that's not quite half and half, right? We did 65 rows of red and then we did 70 of the white. So let me show you an example now of why I did five more rows or rounds of the white than I did the red. So in the finished hat, here's one that I did that was exactly the same. I did 70 red and 70 white. So what happens is that where the red switches to white is almost right on the edge because they're the exact same number of rounds. So then when we flip this up, you see how you can still kind of see the red there? I didn't like that. So instead I wanted it to be more white here so that when this is folded up, there's no red peeking through, it's all white because the white is longer, if that makes sense. So on this one, we did 63 red and 70, I think that was right. I think we did 63 
uh, yeah, I have it written down here, 63 red and 70 white. Yeah, so we did 63 red, 70 of the white. So you can see there's this many more rows than red, but when we have it folded, right? So it's the same length, the white is longer. So now when I fold the brim up, I don't have to worry about the red peeking through because it's all white here. The red is further down because of those few extra rows, okay? So that is the look I'm going for. So that's why we did 65 red and 70 white. So first let's weave in our ends. This is where we joined the red and white. And I did tie two little overhand knots there, right? Once to cinch them up and then another one to secure the knot. I'm going to feed the red tail into my needle and then I'm in the back side. This is the wrong side of the hat. I'm just gonna go through some of these pearl bumps on the back in kind of a zigzag motion. There's no set, you know, it doesn't have to be done a specific way. I just wanna weave in a little bit of a tail so that this tail end doesn't come out. And once I weave in like an inch or inch and a half, that's plenty. So then we'll cut close to the project. Because remember, we have a knot here and then I have this much that got woven in all on the red so I don't see any other tail. Do the same thing on the white. And obviously the white, you want to weave in on the white side of the project. All right, that's plenty. Okay, all right, so those two tails are woven in. Now let's come to the other end here. I'm actually gonna flip this right side out. Okay, so on the red end, you have a tail. You're gonna wanna carefully cinch this up. Don't pull too hard that you're gonna break the yarn, and then you'll be in a whole lot of trouble, but it's kinda like a drawstring. So just roll the edge, it wants to roll out towards the right side, so just roll it to the inside, and then cinch up as you go. Adjust and roll and adjust and roll. And I'm not gonna cinch it up all the way yet, I just wanna bring it together somewhat. Okay, so that's one end, leave it like that. Do the same thing to the white end. Now we're gonna push the white inside of the red because that is the lining. And I'm going to put the white thread tail in my needle and feed it up through the opening at the top of the white section. So let's feed it through the opening in here and have it come out up here. Tail end of white coming out through here and then just rearrange everything and adjust it inside so that the opening of the white end is in line with the opening of the red. And I know some people will use a crochet hook and kind of stitch these two together. This is just like the quick craft version of it how I do it with my kids because it's something simple enough that they can do. All right, so now that I have everything in place, I'm gonna give them a good tug just to cinch up those tops a little bit better. We have really long tails now. They don't have to be that long. So cut them to like eight inches or so. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did where we had the white yarn join the red. I'm gonna tie two overhand knots here and then I'm gonna weave in the ends in between the fabric layers. So this is tucked away inside and these guys can stay cinched up and close together here. And because I have one white tail and the red tail, they're tied together now. So that's one, and I'm just gonna do another little knot. And then just give it a stretch so it hides in between the layers. All right, so everything looks good up top and you can see the extra five rows that we did of white, this is how it shows up here. So now when we fold it up, we don't have to worry about the red peeking through anywhere here because we have additional rows to account for that. Perfect. So now if you didn't wanna add a uh, pom-pom or anything at the end, you would be done. So you can see the same technique that I just showed you on how to introduce a new yarn color, you could do that repeatedly across the height of the hat and have like a striped beanie. That would be cute too. This is cool like that, two layers. Now, uh, let's go ahead and just make a pom-pom with some of the white yarn that we have left over. Now for the pom-pom, I'm just cutting down a piece of cardboard here to four inches by three inches. I 
And then we're gonna take our white yarn and wrap it around along the four inch dimension. Not super tight, because you don't wanna start bending the cardboard just yet. So just wrap it a bunch of times, maybe like 60 to 80 times. The more you wrap it, the puffier the pom-pom will be, but you don't want it to be too puffy where it makes it super hard then to tie all the pom-pom strands together. So don't overflow it too much. All right, and when you're satisfied with your bundle of yarn, grab another loose piece of tail, 12, 15 inches or so, place it on top and you're gonna carefully bend the cardboard so you can now remove all the yarn that you've bundled up. Do it carefully, because you don't wanna start unraveling your entire yarn bundle here. Place it in the center and then grab the two ends and carefully tie an overhand knot to cinch up the whole bundle right in the center. I also like to hold it in the middle and flip it over so that I can tie another overhand knot on the back side. So flip it, put a finger here. It's helpful if you have a kid or another hand of somebody's that you can have them hold that down in the middle so you don't lose tension. And then go ahead and tie two overhand knots right there to secure and hold everything in place. Then go ahead and trim the tail ends so that they're nice and even and leave yourself about six to seven inches or so of length because we'll need that to tie it. Then I grab scissors and you want to find where the loop is of your yarn bundle and carefully with a sharp pair of scissors go ahead and cut it right at the folded edge of where those loops were created and that's going to give you the individual little cut yarn pieces that is then going to puff out and create your pom-pom. So sometimes the loops get lost in there, just make sure that you take your time, locate each loop and cut it in half to separate them. Now I'll give it a shake and using the scissors just go in and trim things up, give it a little bit of a haircut. Wherever you see inconsistent lengths to the yarn pieces, just trim them up so you get a nice and even rounded shape to the finished pom-pom. Now to secure the pom-pom, thread the tail ends of it through your darning needle, then slip it through the top of the hat, making sure to go through the white lining fabric layer so it has something to hold on to. Flip your hat wrong side out and take the two tail ends of that pom-pom and tie them together just like you would your shoelaces. This is gonna be a temporary hold, but it's also going to allow you to wash the hat by removing the pom-pom easily or even replacing the pom-pom over time. So give that a little tie, flip the hat back out, and your Santa hat is complete. All right, so there you have it. That's how quick and easy it is to make a Santa hat. If you enjoyed this video tutorial, go ahead and give it a thumbs up below. Don't forget to click the subscribe button also so you don't miss out on any of my future videos and tell your crafty friends about this video so they can give the project a try as well. Now leave me a comment below and let me know what you thought about this tutorial, the knitting machine, or what other types of projects you'd like to see me make on it. Thanks again for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one.